Oh boy, is the vinegar boiling, my friends. You know, when you're this sick and you try to wake up, everything bothers you, everything upsets you. All apart from one thing. That's right, the Pig Cake Magic Academy. Just look at all the tutorials you get access to the moment you sign up to the Pig Cake Magic Academy. Over 1,300 videos, as a matter of fact. Card stuff, coin stuff, some mentalism stuff. You get access to all that the moment you join. You have beginner tutorials in case you're a beginner. You have expert level tutorials in case you've been around the game for a little while. And all for what? All for the price of a White Claw a month or a Bud Light. So check out the link in the description below and join the Pig Cake Magic Academy today. Everybody that joins says, hey, whoa, why did I wait so long? Uh, you make sure that you didn't say that. Anyways, here's a card trick. You have a participant select a card, in this case the three of hearts. That card is lost in the middle of the deck, never to be seen ever again. Look at that, completely lost. I'm not holding anything in particular. People think, oh, Piggy, I saw that thing where you stick your pinky in there. Look, nothing. But I will ask you one thing. Before I find your card, I'm really not good at magic. So uh, can I get two chances, please? Can I get two chances, please? Of course, a participant grants you two chances and you go, perfect. Um, let me see which one I feel is your card. Um, yes, this one and this one I feel could be your card. And the participant sees that you picked the king of diamonds and the seven of spades. And they go, no, none of those are my card. You're dumb. And I say, wait a minute, the king of spades and the seven of spades aren't your card? I'm dumb? I'm not dumb. Watch this. And here, look at what happens. Oh, whoa. Is that not your card, sir? The card you picked earlier? That's what I thought. Who's the idiot now? You. You're the idiot because you didn't have faith in me, the magician. You got trapped in my web of lies. You thought that the trick went wrong. You thought that even with two chances, I didn't get your card correct. Well, alas, who's the idiot now, huh? When you realize that that was part of the trick. You've been roped into my deception. You're a disgrace. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, my friends. And there's a bunch of different ways to present this. This is just the simplest one. All you need is knowledge of the bottom card because we're gonna be making use of the key card principle. So you could have the deck shuffled and mixed. And after cleverly cutting the video to cough your lung out, <coughs> <coughs> what you're going to do is you're just going to take a peek at the, what the bottom card is. In this case, we have the six of hearts. Now the participant touches any card they want. Let's say they touch this one, the king of diamonds. Now all you got to make sure is that when you cut the cards and have them place the card back in the deck, the bottom card, which is the six of hearts, goes on top of the card they picked. And the way we do that is that while the participant is looking at their card, all we do is just cut the cards in our hands. By cutting the cards in our hands, we're keeping the six of hearts, which is our key card in the right hand. So now when we ask the participant to place their card back on the deck, we just simply coalesce the cards. And now holding no breaks, we know that their card is next to our key card. We don't know what their card is, but we know that it's next to our key card. In this case, we go through the six of hearts right there and we know the king of diamonds is next to it. So we're gonna ask the participant for two chances to find their card. And all I'm gonna do here is go through until I find my key card and I'm gonna stick that card out. So I'm gonna out jog it towards the participant. I'm then gonna spread the participant's card and then out jog the card next to the participant's card. So if you've noticed, we have the key card and the card next to the participant's card sandwiching it. So when we close the deck up and show the participant these two cards, the six of hearts and the three of clubs, they're gonna go, you're wrong, you're an idiot. None of those are my card. This is why your father divorced your mother. And you go, whoa, watch this. Now this is self-working. It's known as the plunger principle. And when you have these two cards that are trapping the other card, because of the friction, if I use my finger to push, what's gonna happen is that naturally that card is gonna come out the other side. Now there are a couple different ways to present this. If you want, you could tell the participant, oh, wait a second. No, ha, see this went wrong because it's not my card, it's your card. So why don't you go ahead and hold your finger out and they hold their finger out and you could have them press onto these cards and now they do the magic themselves. So they see the card come out and it becomes a little bit of a, whoa, how did that happen? If you want, you could just do it yourself and do it relatively slow. And it almost looks like the card is changing color as it comes to the deck. For some odd reason, that seems to be the effect, but really all that's happening is those two cards are pushing the actual card out of the deck. One thing to note as well is that depending on what direction you hold the card is what effect you get. So if you do it like this, where you have the participant hold their finger out, they get a little bit of a rising card trick. Whereas if you do it with the cards down like this, 
it gets the effect of having this weird color changing thing where it looks like as the cards are being pushed they're coming out the other side but changing into their card but ultimately what you get is a simple trick that hits hard you bust this thing out at the elks lodge and they're going to be giving you free drinks for the rest of their life which is uh 10 minutes some advice at the end of the video uh carry a lighter sometimes you go to bars and places and you're going to come across a shoddy that's going to be smoking a cigarette and for some reason women are clumsy they they have cigarettes probably because they bummed it from somebody in the bar, but they never have a lighter. So if you carry a lighter, it's a nice way to intro your way into getting in their pants, especially if it's like one of these, like a fake DuPont lighter, where uh, it's, it's kind of cool, so it becomes a conversational piece, and you can hold it right there while they smoke their Marlboro Red. You can engage in conversation right before you take her back to your place, and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. i see you again when I see you